there's a lot of belief in, in that the players gain from experiences like that. Um, what what you would if you were inside of the locker room, you'd you'd see. All the veteran players, Pozuelo, Josie, rallying around the young guys um, that stepped up in a big way tonight. So, listen, how it bodes for the rest of the year, I, I can only say that what I have said, that there's a togetherness, there's a, a, a playing style that, that, that players are sticking to, um, that they're believing in, they're experiencing some success, and that uh, I think it's empowering that we can be dangerous when we have the ball and when we don't have the ball. So... Obviously, we're just getting started, um, but the, there's also a, a no excuse mentality in that locker room. It'd been easy to go to Mexico and start making excuses about this, that, and the other. But um, just really proud of the team tonight and be part of this organization. And uh, yeah, what a, what an effort tonight! What a, we took it to them. What an effort. Steve Buffery. Steve, go ahead. Well, we'll continue with James Grossi. Thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, congratulations on the results. Uh, big performance from a lot of players for you guys tonight. Uh, Alex Bono was a guy that, that didn't see a ton of minutes last year. Uh, what did you see from him, and in particular, that big save late? Well, I think uh, it was clear. You know, he made some big saves. Um, took care of all the, uh, the the moments he should have taken care of, you know, and, and then makes a couple of big ones. But he looked really sure of himself in distribution and, and crosses and uh, all the handling. So just a real mature, solid performance. And you love when your goalkeeper can, can help the team and reward himself with some, some really big saves late. It's a big presence in there. He did a nice job. Happy for him. Michael McCall. Congratulations on the, the win, Chris. Thank you. Playing competitive matches as opposed to pre-season friendlies is obviously going to get the team in a much better shape. It's meaningful games. Do you feel this is going to give you a little a competitive advantage now at the start of the season? I, I guess you won't know till you hit the pitch, but is that what you're thinking just from what you've seen from the guys? They're at a different level than from what some of the other teams might be? Yeah, I think it's a good question, but, you know, you, you think about having to prepare for these types of matches early on. There's positives and negatives, right? Like we're, we're forced to push the envelope, right? We're, we're representing Canada in this tournament. We, we have that privilege and we have to go to Mexico with difficult circumstances. You know, we have injured. There's, cer there's certain things that are working against us. But as we've tried to push the intensity of training e each day and each week, we've had some injuries along the way, right? So that it just, as much as you get this playoff type mentality early on, which is a big plus, um, we've we've uh, taken some hits too along the way. But we made no qualms about it. We were going after it. So we were, we were going to push. And I think we prepared the team and, and the guys, you know, deserve that credit, right? What, what an effort. But um, yes, either way, we, 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 we internally, from Bill Manning and Ali Curtis, we said we're going to go after this tournament. But as the head coach, I mean, I, I'm in on that and, and driving that messaging and pushing it every day. I was expecting momentum after this. Win, lose, the momentum that would carry into the MLS season especially, uh, you know, getting young young players, valuable minutes, this is going to help us moving forward. We'll try again with Steve Buffery. Steve, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, we'll move uh, to Jonathan Siegel. Hi, Chris. This is Jonathan Siegel from MLSsoccer.com. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, with so many academy players, there's a focus there. But conversely, um, Michael Bradley was immense tonight. At least it seemed that way from afar and what we were watching. What did you see from him? What has his leadership meant in these two legs? Uh, I know you're asking a lot of him. Um, how have you seen him step up to this occasion? Well, listen, I, I think when you see that performance, that's a big player stepping up in, in a big way, driving, driving the team with the football, with the leadership, with quality, 
urging guys on. He's a coach on the field, but urging guys on when their heads are going down. Um, he, he, he's been impressive from the, the day I walked in the door. So this has started a few months ago, but you know, I'm, 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 it's another guy that I, I I'm proud of because I see a big commitment for what we're doing and he's really driving the message and committing fully. But listen, this is Michael. He, he's he's a top player. I've said it weeks ago that I think I'm not so sure people see the talent that we have in front of us. People are quick to judge and count him out, which I really appreciate that because it's just fuel. He's a winner. Um, he's a leader. I've not coached a player that type of leadership skills that just, you know, it's just inherent. It's it's he and he works on it every day. He's really thoughtful about how he shows up every day and you know, it's, it's got to think really nice balance right now of leading by example. I think that's the best thing he can do is play well, which this has been every single day. And imagine these, the, the, what these young players, I remind them that it's not, we, it's not osmosis here. Like you just, it just, you get better by just being here. They, we're encouraging them to watch what a mentor to these young players that Ralph Prizzo stays close to Michael on the field with and without the ball. You can see it's, He's being fast tracked by a by a top, one of the best. We'll take two more questions for the coach, John Molinara. Hi, uh, Chris. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, when you look back at the last ninety minutes, I mean, how would you diagnose it? What, if you could pin pinpoint one or two keys to victory for you guys, I mean, how did you pull this off? Well, there's a few things. I mean, we we went after it in Leon. In doing so, yeah, we, we, we got to see and experience so many different things in ways they can hurt opposition. But, you know, they obviously switched the point of attack. They, they create overloads in wide areas. They have key players in these situations. So we wanted to make sure a few things happened tonight. Um, and, and one was pressure on the ball. As, as much as, it, you know, the teams like that, they need, they need time and space. And to do those, we had to launch more pressing moments up the pitch in a mid block, let's say two, when the ball got wide, then what, right? We're trying to keep it to one side in different ways. Um, and still now we knew where spaces would be in transition when we could win the ball. So we knew if we can launch more attacks of pressing, we can give them less time and space. We could deal with the wide areas that this would inevitably, we saw it in the second half the other the night um, and even in the first half that um, we were able to create transition because they commit so many numbers forward. So it wasn't if, it was when, like the second goal, I believe, yeah, it's, we're, we're dangerous on the night when we don't have the ball. And now if we're, if we're able to capitalize on that, and that was the plan. Say, you know, we're going to create moments. Can we have enough moments where we can make them pay? So easier said than done from the head coach sitting on the side, but the guy is committed to it. They, we trained it, we show it, we work it, we repeat it. And in a quick time, I think the guys are understanding it and, uh, as we say, it's empowering to, to players. Um, yeah. We'll close with Sergio Venegas. Gracias, muy amable. Thank you very much, Sergio Venegas, live from the Portrese. Coach, I see you so calm. You just kick it out the champion of the year, the Mexican League. What are your thoughts about that? And what are you concerned for the next bracket? And congratulations, because you got an astonished performance tonight beating 2-1. I don't understand how you're not going crazy at this moment. <laughs> uh, you missed me right now. Okay, I'm smiling inside, of course, but I had my moment with the team to see Josie Altador, to look on Michael Bradley's face. These are winners. They're team guys. T to, to see the young players, to for them to experience this, I was right in there with them out on the pitch, you know, and um, at the same time, yeah, I mean, it's a special moment for, for us TFC and our supporters back home, you know, uh, that they can feel part of this. But now, listen, it's um, it's it's back to work. It, it's back to work. This is the only the beginning of the season We're we're so proud and uh, that we were able to put Leon in a difficult two games home and away. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with, with the results. There's now we have to quickly get back to work and there's more. There's more for this team. There's much more for TFC here. The young guys coming through, veteran. We're getting healthy. We're getting strong. So 
listen, my thoughts on the match, it's incredible victory for, for the players and, the, and, and I'm, I'm part of it. I'm really proud of the team and, and um, yeah, but we have another game Saturday and getting ready for the next round of Champions League. Coach, thank you so much. With this, we conclude the first part of the conference with Toronto FC. I would like to invite Patrick Mullins.